What's going on? My name's Andrew. We just got to Carter's house. This is my friend's house. This is where our home studio is. So today I'm going to be walking you through how I record stuff on the cello. So let's go. All the way up. Oh, here we go. What up? What's up, bro? How are you? You ready? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay. So this is what we're going to be using to record today. Um, I really like, this is a DPA mic, the 4099 instrument mic. Um, I really like this mic because it uh, doesn't get a lot of feedback when I'm playing live shows outdoors because it's very directionally focused. And in an untreated room like this, like a home studio, it gets a nice direct sound. So this is kind of comes in this box, looks like that. And I just assemble it and I assemble it before I play. Um, and it's super easy to go around and comes in three pieces. This is a little clip that allows it to attach to the cello and I'll show how that works. There's a different, there's a few different ways you can use this mic to record the cello. I've tried different mics and stuff. For playing uh, live shows, I really think that um, this gets a really great sound. If you don't have a electric cello and you're just recording the acoustic cello, this is a great, great mic. Um, I've played in like some big venues and Honestly, they give the musicians these mics because they're very high quality. It's pretty much the industry standard when it comes to recording stringed instruments. Um, I just assembled it. This is kind of what the mic looks like. This part of the mic is flexible, bends. I'll show you how to attach this to the cello. I've got my cello right here. Boom, okay, here we go. What I like to do is clip it. There's some string, kind of some, some um, some string over the strings. I don't know what you call this part, but it's just like this little cloth piece down here. And I clip on the A and the C strings. It just kind of clamps right there. And you can clamp it a few different ways. So you can mic the cello, inverting the mic, going upside down, depending on what kinds of sounds you want to come. So you can slip this kind of mic through these two middle strings here and I would have to scoot this up, but you can kind of clip it upside down like that. But what I prefer to do is I like to get uh, a lot of the lows. The, the cello has a really interesting sound is that you can get a lot of nice, rich low notes on this instrument. If you mic, if you place this mic over one of the F holes in one of the lower parts of the F hole on the left side here, and you can go left or right. I like left because like my hands over here playing the bow, bowing the notes, so. I just kind of bend the mic and we're ready to record. The output of this guy, I usually kind of drape it over my leg. Some people have different ways of fastening this, but um, right here we have an XLR output and that's what we'll use to plug into our XLR cord, XLR cord which will then go into the computer. Uh, and that's how we're gonna record sound today. Let's do it. Carter's handed me the XLR cord, the female end. We're gonna connect these two. Sweet. Boom. Yep. Okay. So this is what our interface our interface looks like. So this is this is a Focusrite interface, audio interface. So we're going to be using the Scarlet today. And basically all that happens is this XLR cord plugs into the Focusrite um, into one of the channels. I believe it's, which channel do you use? Use the first one. Okay. So I have a little bit of a different Focusrite. They make a bunch of different brands of these audio interfaces. Um, but it's very simple, plug that in. So this DPA mic uses phantom power, which is just an external power source. Um, and in order to activate that, your audio interface, the buttons might look a little different, but you just hit this, this phantom power, that'll power up. Now the mic is powered, we're ready to record. Okay, so just kind of recapping, we've got the DPA mic that's all assembled and it's clipped onto the highest string, the A string and the C string, the low string. Uh, and I clip it pretty low here. We've got the mic placed over the left F hole on the instrument. I find that gives like a really nice warm tone uh, when I'm recording and playing live. Um, the alternative is that we can kind of direct this mic up near the bridge and get more of an attack, get more of those like attack sounds from when you're bowing and plucking the instrument. So uh, I've got this set up. We've got this cable that's connected to an XLR. That XLR, is being run right over here into our audio interface. So, and the audio interface is converting 
this analog signal to a digital signal and that's being picked up by our software here. All right, so now we've got the mic set up. Carter's gonna talk a little bit about the software and how we get sounds recorded. Absolutely, so like Andrew talked about, we have the signal path going down through the mic, through the XLR cable we have here into our first input on the Focusrite. Um, we like the Focusrite, obviously. It's a staple in home studios for its um, value, honestly. It's priced well and you get a pretty good preamp out of it. Um, so we like that. Right now we've got it plugged into our first input. Um, our DAW of choice today is Logic Pro and what we've got here is just our first audio track, input number one, and we can see that we're getting signal because the meter is moving here and we have our input monitoring on. So, so we've successfully got sound into the computer, which obviously um, is a huge first step and sometimes you can face some hurdles, but we've got that going. And usually the next thing we're gonna do is get Andrew to tune. Um, in Logic, all you gotta do is come over and grab this tuning fork. And as long as you're getting signal and you've got your track selected, he can tune up here. I should be in tune right now. <laughs> Sweet. So now that he's tuned, um, if we were going to record in this instance, I would arm this track by pressing this R here, which means that when I press this record button, that track is going to record the audio that we've described coming through our interface. Um, and the next really important thing to talk about when recording any instrument is leaving enough headroom and making sure that you're not clipping while you're recording. So a great way to do this is just have Andrew or your artist play a piece of whatever they're going to be playing and you can monitor this track volume down here. We're gonna go make sure we're not clipping any higher than maybe negative five to negative three decibels. So Andrew, if you just wanna play a little bit for us. So you could see right off the bat there, we were a little hot. So I was over here working on our gain, bringing us down a little bit. And you notice while he was playing, you can actually just click on this meter to have it reset. It reset and I noticed he was peaking just about where we wanted. That tells me we're ready to record. All right, so to cap off our video today, we'd be remiss not to show some actual recording. So what we've got, signal coming in, Andrew's been tuned. We did our gain staging to make sure that we're not clipping and we're getting the volume that we want. Um, so now what we have is Andrew's gonna wear our monitoring headphones. Honest, obviously, in a home studio like this, our control room is also the room that we're recording in. So we wouldn't want the sound coming out of our monitors. So he's gonna be monitoring again through our Sennheisers today. That is controlled over here on our interface. Um, so Andrew, if you're ready, I will go ahead and start recording. All right, we're just going to do a little example of Pachelbel's cannon. Yeah. Everyone's heard this one. Here we go. I'll do I'll do like two two tracks. In Logic, to create a new track, I'm just gonna do Command D to duplicate because it's got the settings we need. I see that this new track is input monitoring and it's armed to record. So I can just start Andrew back in the same spot that he was for this next take. Nice. So when Andrew's done with the take and we want to hear it back together, um, I usually just out of practice turn down the headphones that he's wearing. I turn up the volume of our monitors that we're hearing in the room. We can go back and take a listen, first listen. Sounds like Bachmann's here. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I mean, like we talked about at the top of the video, this is just a really great direct sound in a room that isn't really super well treated. We're getting great tone. Andrew did a great job setting up the mic for today's session. And uh, if you've heard any of this stuff on this channel or any of Andrew's other work, this is how we got there and it's how we do it. So we encourage everyone at home to head on out, get your equipment yeah. and start recording. Also, if you're watching this video and you want us to like cover something that you haven't seen in any of our videos so far, be sure to drop a comment and let us know what you think of the video. So, sweet, let's go, good stuff. Until next time.